or combination of consonants and syllables to make his mouth feel Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique New York. That's another good one. <laughs> Say that five times fast. I cannot. Yes, you can. Unique New York. Unique. <laughs> unique New York. New York. Oh, I try to that's go a tough fast. one. Yeah. Unique New York. Unique New York. New York. New York. New York. New York. Good one. <laughs> Oh, ooh, we're going to have to get back up to the top of this document. Okay. All right. Is that big enough for us? I can Can you read it? Maybe blow it up just a little. A little more? I'm going to have to... Li- Hi, guys. Hey, everybody. Who do we got on, Corey? Does it What's say that? on there? All right. Well, our two nameless people. Thank you Facebook. so much yes. for tuning in. Thank you. We really appreciate it, man. This yes. is episode seven, Bex. How? Can you believe this? Wow. It's just like almost two months. Y'all and love us. And the well hasn't gone dry Thank yet. Thank you. We love you back. Okay. Does it start or just keep riffing? Okay. Let's go ahead. Why don't you say we start the show? All right. Okay. Good evening, y'all. I am Dr. Bex, and with me, as always, is Jeff. Every Monday around this time, Jeff and I will discuss a different cannabis topic. Today's topics are the different types of cannabis packaging and the labels affixed to them. So, cannabis comes in many, many forms, and those many forms require different types of packaging. Many types. Unfortunately, almost all of them are partially made from plastic. There are a few glass options, but by and large, cannabis comes encased in plastic. That's because cannabis has to come in packaging that a child cannot access. According to the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, quote, any marijuana or marijuana-infused products packaged for retail sale before delivery to a dispensary must be packaged in opaque, resealable packaging designed or constructed to be significantly difficult for children under five years of age to open, but not normally difficult for adults to use properly. An example of that would be the flour we carry from Flora Farms. Uh, by the way, we just got back in stock from Flora, the Chemovar's Blue Dream Chem 4 and Cobalt Fire. Opaque and resealable, childproof packaging goes for any flour served deli style too. Deli style just means loose flour is delivered in big bags to a dispensary, then transferred to large glass jars. To be sold to a patient, the flour has to be weighed, then placed in opaque packaging that is difficult for a five-year-old to open. Any edibles or concentrates must be packaged for retail by the infused products manufacturer before transfer to a dispensary. So, the packaging has to be opaque. That means it cannot be seen through. That offers pluses and minuses. On the plus side, it cuts down on the curiosity factor should a parent be irresponsible enough to leave their medicine in place that's easily accessible to a child. On the minus side, the packaging is emblazoned with the words marijuana in several places, so any child that can read will know what they're looking at. On the plus side, opaque packaging prevents light from oxidizing the product, thereby preserving its freshness longer. On the minus side, you cannot see the product, so you just have to trust your bud tender when they tell you the bag eighth you're buying has some good sized nugs in it. The packaging may also be made from heavy duty plastic that even a child could tell you has no chance of decomposing in their lifetime. Some of that heavy duty plastic is called mylar. Now a lot of the flour sold in Missouri comes in mylar bags. On the plus side, mylar traps odor like no other. Seriously, you you can't smell a thing. You can also print graphics directly onto the bag. But there ends the pluses, because mylar never decomposes. I'll say that again, mylar never decomposes. So when you finish that eighth, maybe not throw your bag in the trash. That means you'll have to start storing them in your home until someone figures out how to recycle them. Not convenient, I know, but better than putting them in the trash. So, the packaging has to be opaque. It also has to be resealable, but hard to open for a child five years old or younger. So, let's take a look at some of the packaging from products we sell here at Field State. We're gonna start with those pesky Mylar bags. 
First thing we need to do is remove the top portion of the bag. This can be a challenge because tearing at the notches can sometimes tear the bag more than it should. The easiest thing to do is to cut the top off from notch to notch. Now, now that we have the top removed, we have to separate the opening. And that means fumbling around with our fingers a bit until, and I'm not fooling around here, until we get the top of the bag open. When we finally do, we're gonna discover a thin strip of green plastic there on the inside. That strip has to be held against the one side of the bag before the zipper can be opened. Hey, fun fact, Doc. Did you know that the Ziploc bag was invented in 1950 by Bourget Madsen? No clue. I learn something new every day with you, Jeff. Don't you love working with me? <laughs> it's a splendid time. Wow, so now some of these Mylar bags do not have a green strip, but a rib that runs the length of the zipper. That forces the patient to use their thumbnail to hold the rib to one side. On the plus side, this is fantastic security as young thumbnails would have a difficult time finding the rib. On the minus side, thumbnails come in different lengths, okay? A patient's hands could also have tremors or be arthritic, which is why the next package could be an easier option. Doc's talking about the glass jars with plastic lids that I left in the cases out on the sales floor, but I'm gonna mime it. So, the jars, like the bags, must also be opaque, and the lids require the kind of downward pressure your average five-year-old can't muster. If the pressure isn't applied, the lid is just gonna simply spin around counterclockwise. Now, these jar and lid combinations come in different styles and levels of opaqueness. On the plus side, the jars can be reused again and again for anything from office supplies to spices to whatever you can find people doing with them on Etsy. On the minus side, we're talking plastic lids that take who knows how long to break down. Also, the child resistance mechanism in the lid won't work forever, so you might end up with an empty glass jar you can't take the top off of. Now, just because glass plastic dominates the market doesn't mean it's the only option. Right, Doc. There are products on the market that are packaged in paper, like vape carts. But inside that box is a product packaged in glass, metal, plastic, and sometimes ceramic. And I'm going to guess most people throw them in the trash when they're done with them. That's because traditional recycling facilities have no method to extract the desired materials from an empty cart. Not to mention, no one's recycling the lithium batteries from disposable vapes. If you're wondering why that might be important, just Google Morris, Illinois lithium battery fire that lasted from this past June into July. Your minds might be blown, folks. Check that out. So, what are the pluses for vape carts then? Well, they are incredibly convenient, especially if you're going out for the night with just a clutch purse. They fit comfortably in a front or back pocket, and changing a cart is as easy as screwing in a light bulb. The biggest plus is the smell, or lack thereof. Because you are exhaling vapor and not smoke, this is way less odor. You know what else has way less odor, Doc? Keef beverages in a 12-ounce aluminum can. Hey. This can of Blue Raspberry Keef had 23 milligrams of THC, and has a really interesting child mechanism for the opening. If you take a look at the top of the can, you're gonna see a black plastic pull tab. Now, there used to be a thin white strip on there. When you pop the top, it breaks the strip and opens the tear line in the mouthpiece. Now, slide the pull tab away from the can and you can begin to medicate. When you've taken your optimal dose, slide the plastic tab back into its original position and press down to lock the tab in place. That's gonna preserve the remaining carbonation in the can. Well, I think that covers the materials cannabis comes packaged in, plastic, paper, glass, and aluminum. Let's move on to labeling. All right. According to the DHSS, labels have to have the following information in the following order. One, the weight of the cannabis. 
for flour and concentrates, the weight has to be listed in grams. The weight of infused products has to be listed in milligrams of THC. Two, the labels must also list dosage amounts, instructions for use, and estimated length of time the dosage will have an effect. Then we get to the tricky third part. The label has to indicate the THC, THCA, CBD, CBDA, and CBN concentrations. THCA and CBDA are the acidic forms of cannabinoids. They're also non-psychoactive, so those numbers aren't the best to use for estimating the kind of an experience you might have. THC, CBD, and CBN are better bellwethers, most of the time. By that, Jeff just means sometimes a label will list impossibly low numbers of THC and a reasonable sounding percentage for the acidic forms. For example, we have a chemovar here that lists the THC percentage as 0.122. Hmm, and the THCA percentage as 28.315. Does that mean that the chemovar is really only 0.11% THC? Mm, yes and no. Sometimes, when a batch of flour is curing, THCA can convert to THC in small amounts. And those amounts will show up when the batch is tested, and they have to be included on the label. That leaves patients to believe that the acidic percentages are the true bellwether. Not so much. When you decarb or combust the flour, you can presume the THC percentages will be a few percentages lower than the acidic form. Same goes for CBD and CBN. Other information that has to appear on the label are all active and inactive ingredients. That means if you have a savory blend of popcorn seasoning, all ingredients must be listed. You can't just say proprietary blend or spices. If you're buying a bag of flour, you can expect the label to also list the cultivating facility. If you're getting an edible, the label will list the name of the infused product manufacturer. Finally, the label has to have a best if used by date. Which is different from a sell by date. A sell by date is the last day a product should remain on the shelves before being pulled and disposed of. A best by date is the last day the product will have its best flavor and quality. It's still fine to consume, it just might not taste as fresh as when it went into the packaging. All right, folks, I think bada boom, bada bam, da bam, that's the end of this show. Well, wham. And we can almost the end. <laughs> almost the end, as long as we take questions from the audience. Okay, we're first going to start out by saying hello to some people. We're going to say hi to Aww. all the way at the top. We've got Juanita Best. Hi, hi Juanita. Juanita. Thank you so much for turning in. We've got John out there. Oh, my favorite. We've got Naomi Walls. Hi, Naomi. Hi. Thank you so much for turning in. John Ray Thomas. Oh, look at that. We got some love going up on there. That's awesome. <laughs> and Susan Spring. Hey, Susan Spring. Oh, for Dandy is also there. Hey, Her what the brand. Who else we got on there, Bex? Hey, we got the off ING. Super Snacks STL. I am Josh314. What up, y'all? Fantastic. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. And for those of you that turn in week after week, we love you guys. Thank you so much. You're the reason we got to get up and write this stuff. So thank you. And our first question of the day has rolled up on us from Susan. Are there sugar-free gummies for the diabetics? Awesome question, Susan. Right now, no, there are no sugar-free gummies on the market. We do carry a sugar-free lozenge, which is sweetened with monk fruit. I don't know what monk fruit is, but it's a natural artificial sweetener. Uh, it comes in 15 milligrams per tablet and 20 tablets per container. So for a total of 215 milligrams for the whole container. Right. So that's, when it, that's an option that we have out there for you, Susan. And let's see, do we have any other Let's see, questions? why don't more companies use paper or metal in their packaging? Like, why is no one using hemp? Awesome question. Mm -hmm. Okay, why is no one using hemp? Uh, that's gonna be because it's too expensive right now. 
The 2018 Farm Bill legalized industrial hemp in America, but the infrastructure still isn't there. And if you want to use hemp in large quantities, you have to import from other countries, namely China. And because of the coronavirus that has slowed things way down, jack prices way up. So the product uh, packaging manufacturers that I've talked to are definitely interested in using hemp. Just the unit cost has to come down. So that means we need to get more processing facilities across America to process all the hemp that the farmers out there are growing. Dope. Okay. Do we have any more questions there, Corey? Or we're going to Okay. Why isn't there any consistency in the way the information appears on the label? Okay. Um, well, the reason for that is the state says you have to have this information in this order. It doesn't say it has to be presented in such a way. That, that didn't make any sense. Rewind. Okay, let's rewind. State says you have to have certain information in certain order on the packaging, but it doesn't say it has to go in a column from top to bottom or left to right like you're reading a book. It's left up entirely for the people that are manufacturing these products to figure out how that information is going to appear on the label. So what needs to happen is there needs to be industry standardization. Everybody's got to get together and say, okay, the state's told us this information's got to appear on here. We're going to get together and agree how it's going to look because as a patient, as a bud tender, it is confusing as hell to go from brand to brand and see 20 different types of labels out there. It's a frenzy, definitely a headache. So manufacturers listening, help a bud tender out. Please get together, standardize this kind of information not just for our benefit, for our patient's benefit. That's exactly. who we're making the medicine for. That's why it's in that package, so the patients can read it. So let's make it clearer for them, guys. All right, uh, let's see. What specials do we have going on at Field State? Oh. Well, we always have running the ounce of the day from Flora Farms, Fire Flora Farms. Um, there are ranging in three different tiers, from ranging from... To four seventy. Two seventy. To two forty. Yes. To two fifteen. Yes, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the ounce specials like it's his job. So it is my job. <laughs> well, here's the thing: Flora sells us their product now based on THC percentage. Our pricing has to reflect that. Mm -hmm. So we've created tiers like Flora created tiers. Here's the good thing, though, for our patients. Seven chemovars went down in price to 35 bucks. Seven stayed the same at 40 and only two went up five bucks to 45. Eight. So if you're still looking for those great flora flowers, you can still get it here. The ounce prices are fantastic. So come on down, yeah. check it out. We even today had a mystery ounce special where Ooh. you could have mixed and matched chemovars inside of your bag for only $200. Oh, is that still gonna be going on tomorrow? I'm not sure. We will. You're going to have to call us tomorrow and find <laughs> out. <laughs> and All right. uh, what else specials we got? We also have um, from Heya, Katsu Bubba. If you purchase an eighth of that, you will receive for a penny Scooby Snacks pre rolls. So That's a full gram pre roll joint, folks. And get it while supplies last because they aren't lasting that long. Right. I thought we only had a couple of Scooby Snacks pre rolls left. Oh, shoot. Come on down, folks. Get it while you can. Yeah. All right, let's see. Can we explain the difference between Wana gummies that display two to one, one to one on the label? Okay. That's pretty easy, folks. So two to one, one to one, those are ratioed products. That means it's gonna have more than one type of cannabinoid in it. Now, two to one, you're usually going to see, well, I'm not gonna say usually. You can see CB dominant, listed two to one, you can see THC dominant listed two to one. So if it doesn't say on the packaging, definitely ask your bud tender, but the higher number is going to be the dominant cannabinoid. Mm -hmm. Why do some edibles display indica or sativa on them? Is there a difference when it's in an edible form? So, um, edibles display indica or sativa on them Simply, I would say for patient comfortability because patients, 
we don't really assume are farmers who would be interested in things such as the name of sativa or indica, which refer to the structure of that plant, either tall and lanky for sativa or short and stubby for um, indica. And they're marketing terms. Yeah. These days, indica, sativa, hybrid, they're marketing terms. People are comfortable with them. They think indica into couch. They think sativa going to be up to the sky, hybrid somewhere between the two. But when it comes to edibles, they're usually, 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 usually <laughs> using distillate. What that means is they are extracting just what they need from the plant, leaving the extras like chlorophyll, fats, lipids, waxes out of the equation. Right. So. All of those properties that made it maybe an indica or a sativa, all that is like Jeff said, stripped away. It's just... So you're just getting the cannabinoids in there. And when you're just extracting cannabinoids, it doesn't matter whether it came from an indica or a sativa, it's just pure THC or pure CBD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why some of your cartridges say live resin on the label. Why are they more expensive? Oh, this is okay, live resin. We love, love live resin live at resin. Field State and that's because of the way it is made. When you make live resin, you harvest the plants and you immediately flash freeze them. That's because you want to trap as much moisture and as much cannabinoids and terpenes as you possibly can. If you let the plants cure in a humidity controlled room out in the environment and the air, oxidation is going to happen and you are going to lose some of those noids, you are going to lose some of those terps. Not with live resin. The moisture traps it all. So as soon as it's frozen, you can then take that biomass and process it. One of the things I love about live resin is that when you consume it, it's less harsh on your nasal passages. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you out there, but when I take a hit off a regular, regular vape card, it's like I just got water up my nose. I got to sneeze, my eyes get red, not with live resin. It's just a fantastic product, more flavorful, and that's why it's more expensive the process that it takes to go through. Mm -hmm. I got a question. What are terpenes, where are terpenes listed on the label? Where are terpenes listed on the label? That is a great, great question. Um, so where the cannabinoid profile typically is on the label, um, listing the THC or CBD or THCA, CBDA, profiles um, usually cat a corner or close to it juxtaposed is the terpenes um, and that's only if we're lucky because not everyone lists terpenes on their labels um, not everybody tests for terpenes and yeah. doc had a hard time answering that question because again there's no consistency in, in the way the information is presented on the label. We can say, oh, on this brand, look down here. On this brand, look right here. But she's correct. Not very many people test for Terps. You're not going to see it on too many labels. Right now here at Field State, we've got two brands that have the Terpene profiles on the label. That's Illicit Gardens and Proper Cannabis. Shout out to y'all. Y'all doing so it you right. you guys will be able to see that. Now, if you really are interested in what the true profile of the plant is, you can always ask your bud tenders to see the COA or the certificate of? Analysis. Analysis. That's going to give you a breakdown of the terps if they tested for it, the cannabinoids, any levels of any heavy metals, pesticides, residues, what have you, all within acceptable or not acceptable levels, that COA will tell you. So don't be afraid to go up and ask a bud tender if you can see that. Why did you hand me this card? Aha, okay. Hey, Renee, you're sorry you're late. That's okay, don't worry about it. I love the fact that John Ray knows you. You guys are like peas in a pod. Aw, hi, Renee. <laughs> Glad Doctor, the new this. gummies she got from you are amazing. Thank you, what did uh, she sell yay. her? Today, or was that the other day? Um, sold her some. Was it the Smokies? Renee, was it sure. the Smokies? It had to have been Smokies. It had to have been the Smokies. That's yeah. the newest brand that we have out here. 100 milligram, 250 milligram strength. They are aggressively entering the Missouri mm -hmm. market. That's why we are able to sell them for, I think, 40 and 20 bucks. 40 yes, for the 250, sir. 20 for the 100. 
that's way lower than the other gummies that we have right. out on the market they right now. They are coming in hot. Even so, if you were to purchase an edible from any company um, that we have here at Field State. Like a Wana or a Vivid robots, Gummy or Robots. Or Honey Bee, whatever. Um, Smokies is like, hey, try my product for a penny in the watermelon or the blueberry. Just try it. Try it. And um, yeah, it's been flying off our shelves. So, Renee had the watermelon gummies. Ay. The watermelon. And Susan Black Oak says, Smokies are fire. We love yes. Smokies. They hooked us up with some great swag, too. These, um, what do you call them? Fanny, fanny packs. packs. I know fanny packs are kind of passe, but they're coming back around. Amanda Rao says they are delicious and effective. I agree. And I am basically in charge of medicine cabinet makeovers here. And literally, Smokies has been doing my job for me as far as flipping people's medicine cabinets. They're changing from pain pain tablets, I don't know, insom or anxiety stuff to... Benadryl. Benadryl, literally everything. Like, that's gone. Smokies, thank you. You're being replaced with, or Smokies, or... Cannabis is replacing cannabis is the replaced. contents of people's yes. medicine cabinets. I'll, I'll be honest, Doc, it's my only medicine. It's the only thing I take. I don't take over the counter medication. Seriously, he was sick just like what a few two weeks, weeks ago. ago and two weeks ago, I was out for three days. All I, all I was because I didn't want to smoke because my lungs. It went from my head to my lungs, and you don't want to smoke when you got crap in your lungs. I went the medicated route and went with a two hundred milligram keef kiwi strawberry beverage. Okay. One low sugar for me, really important as a pre diabetic. Hopefully, any people out there watching that are manufacturers, where are those savory options? I'm still gonna bug you for those. That 200 milligram beverage, I was able to stretch out over the course of three days and get the relief that I needed just to feel comfortable on the couch. Wow. wow. So, big up. Thank you, Keith, for that. Okay, let's see. How reliable are strain names on the label? Oh, just as reliable as... Yeah, mm. that reliable. <laughs> Again, folks, they're marketing terms. People yeah. have a lot of fun coming up with them because if they come up with a clever name for a product, they know people are going to try it, at least want to try it, or at the very least, social media tweet about it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and it, it, it kind of makes it hard for people to figure out what came from what when you keep coming up with new names all of the time. That's And it's just driving people to have to pay attention to the label, the cannabinoid, profile and the terpenes on the label to really see what the, their experience is going to be or what right they're because after. what 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 are you going to tell from what what's grease monkey going to do for you right what, what is a patient left to infer from that so not picking on hair or anything like that that yeah. was the first one that popped in my head but you know alaskan thunder or any of these other strains Right. out there there's you know we we got to change the language we got to start saying okay it's this cannabinoid profile it's this terpene profile when they figure it out it's this flavonoid profile once we get that information we're going to start seeing the similarities and you know six degrees of kevin bacon <laughs> everybody's related hey. okay why do companies not yet list type one type two type three on the label because they're still stuck in the whole indica sativa Right. hybrid paradigm once we're trying to shake that really hard here at field state we don't like using indica sativa hybrid we know some of our patients are comfortable with that so we're perfectly willing to switch up our language but we're really trying to get people to think in terms of type 1 type 2 and type 3 type 1 being high thc type 2 being more ratioed and type 3 being more sativa dominant and in English, like really, we're just trying to look at your experience, what you're going for. Do you want to be uplifted? Do you want to be relaxed? Do you want to be energized? What do you want? We point you towards that. So, yeah. All right. I think we're going to take the last question here. Any edibles with CBN and melatonin or other cannabinoids? Uh, yes, we've got a couple of products with CBN in it. First off, Keef beverages, a couple of Keef beverages, if you check the ingredients on the back label, do have a small amount of CBN in it. So let's see if this is one of them. Not this time around, but blue raspberries that I've had in the past from them did contain CBN. We and we also carry Robots nighttime gummies, which contain CBN and melatonin in it. Not sure the melatonin strength, 
200 milligrams melatonin, 200 milligrams of CBN, 100 milligrams of THC for the entire package. I knew he knew. We've also got the daytime robots, which have THC and CBC. CBC is a wonderful minor cannabinoid that, in addition to its wonderful anti-inflammatory properties, acts as a cellular regenerator. Helps your body get up and moving. Hey, Bobby. All right, seven degrees. Thank you, Bobby. Seven degrees from Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and what are your favorite strains? What are your guys' favorite thing on the shelf right now? Uh, that question came from Nick. What's your favorite thing on the shelf, though? My favorite thing on the chef shelf right now comes from Terrapin Station, which is a... Um, a company who came out from Colorado. I originally tried them in Colorado in Boulder in that dispensary and now they're in Missouri and they have a fire fire chemovar called mac and cheese. Mac and cheese y'all is where it is at. Like, uh -huh, that's what I was going to say too. Mac uh -huh, and cheese. Beat you. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a phenomenal nose. It's gassy. It's terpy. It's got limonene in there. It's got to have oh, terpinoline in there. It's definitely got some pinene. Very uplifting chemovar. Yes. Had it with my chai this morning. Got Ooh. me going for a day. Ooh, love that for you. I typically like working on mac and cheese. Um, it makes me talkative, it gets me going, gets my energy juices flowing. I don't know, mac and cheese. All right. I will be you. Now I'm hungry. All right. <laughs> keep being you both and keep speaking your language. Bobby, <laughs> uh, we're going to keep doing it, man. Thank you for you, turning Bobby. in. We love you guys. We really do. Thank you all <laughs> so much. All right, we're going to wrap up this edition of The Feels. I am Jeff, as always, next to me, Dr. Bex. Next week, episode eight. Cannabis oh. etiquette. What should you do and not do when you're by yourself or when you're in a solo sesh? That it's the same thing or when you're with a group. So next week, Tune cannabis in. etiquette. Check it out, guys. Bye. Another one. Another one. <laughs> yes. Wrap it up. I'll Peace. take it.